artist soul from the planet. This one straight to a boy then. You better press it, no connect. Left boy a shake and a fret. And you P45 if you can it. Fire red and dead, nigga. From, from you days I've been playing music, messing about with instruments and all kind of things. Mm. Musical. Yeah. yeah. Pots, pans, you know what I mean? Wooden box, everything. Yeah. <laughs> until we get the, until I got the real thing. Yeah. Right? So yeah. That's a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where, where would you say your <clears throat> career today started? My career started. What was your first in, interject into being into the music industry? Well, from from I was a youth really because um, me and my brothers when we were very small. I think my, my dad used to be a, a roadie. Okay. So. They used to keep the equipment at the house, you know, yeah. we used to have a basement. Yeah. So at a small age, I already knew what a drum kit was by the age of five. I, okay. knew, I knew what, you know, what okay. to do, what the bass was, what the keyboard was. I knew what it was, but yeah, mm -hmm. from so you, early. So you used to play at home, did you used to play at school then? Yeah, I did eventually really? end up playing in school, Yeah. which was um, funny because uh, when I went to my school, <clears throat> actually I was a little bad man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we look a friend them, you know. And think. So when the music started coming into the school, mm -hmm. none of my friends knew that I was really musical. Yeah. So you know, I was good with like listening to melodies, yeah. finding them. Yeah. So I started doing music. Okay. Yeah. So was you in that like, school productions and stuff like that? No, not really. But what happened later on in school was I met up with some other youths that was in the school the same time as me. Mm. And I met, um, there was a brother that could play drum, Mark, I can't remember his surname. You know what I mean? Mm. Mark, Colin Shaw, he liked status quo, so he used to play rhythm. Mark was the drummer. Mm. And then another bridge in the mind, Patrick France, so I was a good guitarist, so I took up the bass. Yeah. You know? And yeah, that was my first band. You know? okay. It was called the, um, what was it called again? The Dominoes or something like that. The Dominoes? Yeah, something like that. I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't remember. You know? Because it was, it was a mixed band, you know? Okay. Two white boys and two okay. black boys. So. Okay. And the two white guys, the brother who used to play the drum, he played it good because um, I 
showed him how to play reggae, obviously. When he used to try and play it, I said, no, take the sticks and play it like this. And he played it. He, he was just a good drummer. We, we rolled about for about three years. We done we done two years out of school. So when I left school, I was still we were still together. And um, yeah, we just got older and went different ways. But I, but I stayed in the music, you know. Just about to say, that was your first band. That was yeah, yeah. Then after that. Really, that first band was like a family band. Yeah. My brothers were too young. So it was me and my friend them, and after that it was me and my cousins and We had a band, a family band called the Mighty Shades. In the 70s, you know, around about 13, 14, um, I'm really, I'm, I'm already playing melodies. I'm, I can hear something and play it back. So I was with the family band for about seven years, seven, eight years. We've done a lot of shows together, I learned how to play, you know, stuff like Louis Armstrong stuff. So we never just played reggae, you know, we played yeah. everything. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. How did your family feel about your, about your career choice? My family was for it. My dad wanted to be a musician, he never played, so what he did, he used to buy all the instruments and said, well, I learned that. <laughs> <laughs> So that was good, you know what I mean? That, yeah. That, yeah. Big him up for that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we know that all along the way you did all, you was on loads of different bands and it got you further and further, but what actually got you into the industry? What really got me into the industry was the family band. Okay. The year, the Mighty Shades, round about 1977. 78, something like that. It could have, it could be, it could have been in the, around about 80, coming up to that time. We actually got a chance to go on one of these um, talent competitions, okay. and um, these guys that I was telling you about in school, they was still in the band at that time. So we had a white drummer, white rhythm guitarist, black BSC, keyboard player was one of my family. I had an uncle that could sing like James Brown and he just used to sing like everybody. Otis ready me lay it and my mash it up. Anyway. And we had a couple of I had a couple of elder cousins that that were you know most of them play horns so I had two elder cousins. One was playing the tenor, one was playing alto and uh, we had um my dad brought along one of his Jamaican world time friends. There's a brother named Joe Bundy. Now, the reason why I'm going to mention his name is that I, I didn't really know about this man's history until he came along in a family band. And he was the one that started, started to get us to play like Louis Armstrong tunes because he could sing them. And not only he could sing, he could blow the trumpet just like the man. And um, he was in the band, and that man kind of gave me a footprint on how to know my notes. Because yeah. at, at that time I was still playing by ear. Yeah. He said to me, what key was that? I just said, this saw me, I'm playing the note. <laughs> kind of thing, you know? And I said, yeah, what note? He said, this saw me, look on my hand. <laughs> Boom. Uh, you know? <laughs> but working with the elder, yeah. you know, when he used to play, when he used to play these jazz tunes, I wasn't really into jazz, mm. but because of him, I, you know, he taught me how to, where my notes were. Okay. So when we needed to change and he was playing a jazz tune, mm. he would play, whilst he was playing, he shot the note to me where to change, you know. Yeah. It works, and you know, it's good to know your notes, so, yeah, that, the family band, we went on Opportunity Knocks at the time, okay. yeah, and um, we'd done the audition, and uh, I think a few months after that, it, it, it wasn't happening no more, and then this new program called New, new Faces or something, new faces, yeah. yeah, something like that, in the, 
back in the day. But by this time, my friends had maybe not in the music, but you know, the two white guys definitely had careers set up. I think Colin's family was in construction. Okay. And I, and I, up to this day, I haven't seen them, and the friend they left the band, I've not met them again. You know? So wow. you talk about a good, I don't know, 40 odd years or something. Wow. Yeah, not seen them, not, none at all. Not, not seen them on Facebook or anything, but they were the first set of musicians. And yeah, we went to Opportunity Knocks, we done, we done, we, we performed the blues tune that was written by my uncle at the time. And we performed, I get to meet Huey Green at the time, Shaky Man. Got to see Lenny Henry's first audition before he, you know. Before he became. Yeah, man. Man. Yeah. Get to see certain people. So, yeah. My family band, Mighty Shades. Yeah. I know you also did a little bit of singing way in the past. <clears throat> well, from the Mighty Shades band. I used to sing a couple of tunes with them as well, that's why I could sing. Um, in terms of making records with my singing voice, I've probably done two. Okay. Yeah, a long time ago. With a, a band named Sheer Gold. Okay. Um, yeah, man. <clears throat> I was involved in loads of bands. Remember a band named One Blood? Mm -hmm. One Blood with my good friends. Okay. Yeah. Uh, two of the brothers out of one blood was in my family band, Mighty Shades. Mm -hmm. And when the Mighty Shades, I actually left Mighty Shades. Okay. Because um, my dad, you know, the, the music business was changing to how it was, how my dad was operating. Mm -hmm. So my brothers was coming up. So. You were going together. Yeah. I left them, I left the brothers now to come up with the family band. Yeah. But, you know, and I went solo. Not solo, but, you know, went yeah. to do my career now. Yeah. You know? And, um, yeah, worked with a lot of um, artists, musicians. Like? Like, um, at the time, he was fresh. Maxi yeah. was one of the singers. Maxi Priest. Um, one Blood. Then Slowly. A lot of them, Simplicity, The Blood Sisters. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to remember, you know, but everybody that was involved in, you know, in the eighties, coming right up. We was all there, all of those rock artists then. You know, I worked with Michael Gordon from um, um, Investigators Banners. <coughs> nice brother, energetic. Mm -hmm. Always like Michael, you know. And, um, and the rest of the band, yeah. the tradition, all of them, man. The, all of, you name them, I know all of them. That's why, you know what I mean? If they rule back the clock, they're going to see me sitting there watching them in the, in the shows. I watched all of them, mm -hmm. still pulsing, you name it. <laughs> yeah. Who or what inspired you? All of them people that I mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one of them. Every single one of them. <laughs> Anybody with a car. Yeah. Yeah, man. Why is music important to you? Music is a way of life. Um, you can see, you can see the world through music. Mm. You know, and if the, you know, if people are not actually talking to you, you can find, you can find knowledge in the music as well. You know? yeah. Messages. Definitely. So, and it's it's something that doesn't fight your back, you know. Mm. It doesn't argue with you, music doesn't argue. People do. <laughs> <laughs> and music, music don't argue, you know. Yeah. Do you believe in the most high? I don't believe in him, I know him. That's the only way I can say it. Okay. How does he affect your work? Without him, I couldn't work. Mm. That's how much the effect is, you know. Mm. If he's not there, I'm not there at all. So, could you tell the Fire family where your five your music journey has taken you? Where around the world have you been? Where my music mm. abilities mm. have taken me probably around the world twice in my life. Mm. Wow. 
there are still places that I have not been to to, to play music, you know. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I've been around the world twice. Nice. Yeah. And it's all music, all music, all music. And what, what was the most memorable one for you? The memorable one for me, well, there's three. Okay, <laughs> tell me about them. Well, <clears throat> the first time I went to Poland, um, Linton Quincy Johnson was on the same show. Oh. Um, Dennis Bovan oh. was there with the band back in Linton. Bovan, he was on the show. I was playing guitar for Tunka Brothers at the time and Grimsley Ford was flown, he was on the same trip to just announce, wow. you know, be the um, host. The host. Yeah. That was a memorable show for me, playing in Poland. And the next one was in America. Uh, America's a big place, you know. Really? Yeah, I remember the first time. I did a show called Reggae on the River. <coughs> Reggae on the River, yeah. Big show. I couldn't see where the people them stop. It was like a sea of people. Yeah. That, that was a big show. One of the biggest. After that, it, 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 it got bigger. Yeah. It got bigger. And Japan. When I went to Japan, I went to Japan with um, the Robotics Band, oh. which is a my professor mm. affiliation. Yeah? You know, Lee Scratch Perry. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. You've done work with Horace Sandy as well, haven't you? Horace Sandy, uh, I'd work with Horace from in the eighties with the same people that I was telling you, Beckham. Yeah. yeah. And like, that's where Horace was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's my bigger brother. <laughs> yeah, man. You must leave out that you do a little bit of acting as well. Yeah, a little bit of acting. I mean, <clears throat> it was a bit of acting, yeah. But it was real because we never had no script. Yeah. And we was told to kind of... Well, I was given... know what the show was? Well... We knew what it was about, roughly. Mm -hmm. And normally them give you things to read, you know, that's yeah. all. I thought it was, but they, they, they kind of read the story to us and said, well, all right, there's going to be a scene. Mm -hmm. And... Um, what was it called again? We the Ragamuffin. We the Ragamuffin, sorry. Yeah. They said, it's going to be a scene, and um, just, this is what's going to happen, or let's see how you act if this mm -hmm. happens. So, it's like, all right, then I know you're going to burst through the door, but what would you normally do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of to, what, that's what came out of it. It was a joy yeah. to do, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? And we made, we, we was talking our own lines, you know? Mm. So it's like, all right, then, some man's going to come in and they're going to ask for some, for some money. So I was like, okay. All right then. So what? When he comes in, what do I just give him the money? So I thought, no, I've got to say something. Who yeah. ever said to our man when he come in and say, oh, why wow, some money? I'm gonna have to look at him and say, well, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, they have to create something. Yeah, it was a joy. It was nice. It was it was an experience, man. Because you know what I mean. You know, it was a serious thing because after it was done. I remember one time walking down, I was walking somewhere in Lewisham Way, you know, local town. And this lady, black lady with her children, said to me, Oh, excuse me. And I turned around and said, Was you in that movie the other day? So I said, What, read a rubber muffin? She said, Yeah. So I said, Yeah, yeah, it was me, man. She said, I think that you portray black people really bad. And start, start what some things, some said, well, you know what, I never read the play yet. And I said, if you watch it again, my part was serious. Yeah. <laughs> Neither did I trip nobody with no gun. We did I try to put on a show. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Kind of thing, you know? And that, all that, all that kind of 
Yeah, yeah man, it's something. I remember them little things like that. Yeah. Yeah. You've done a lot to help the community as well, haven't you? Always do. I come from the community, so you know, the first people you help is the, is your community. Mm. Uh, how have I helped them? Not really with money, it's just spend time with the youths then that wanted to maybe do some producing, mm. want to do some playing, want to learn to do something, mm. you know, and um, yeah, yeah, I'll do that, that's second nature. That's something you'd love to do, isn't it? That's second nature, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man. What struggles do you think people, artists, producers, sing, singers, whatever, in the music industry? Um, you face quite a lot of things. Yeah, the, the business the, is, the business is limited. It's, it's kind of limited <coughs> to where you can go mm -hmm. as a, you know, as a reggae black artist. Why? Well, the facilities, you know, for us to get them, they're expensive still. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They've made it deliberately like that so that we can't make nothing, but we always find a way around this thing, you know? Mm -hmm. From we got the guidance of the most, I will always find some kind of way to deal with this thing. Yeah. But you've got to be committed, otherwise no, you won't see nothing, yeah. you know? So everybody that's been there before me that we know of, you know, I have to pick them up because I started to realise that there is a whole heap of prejudice mm. whether you're black, white, pink, yellow, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not a colour thing no more. It's like your music is going to appeal to the masses and that is a problem straight away. Yeah. <laughs> so before when we used to make music, we only used to make it to our people. It wasn't bothering nobody. Yeah. We could have sing what we like yeah. and sing what we like and nobody never met. Mm. Oh, oh, you're not allowed to say that. Mm. Yeah. You know. But as you know, things get more. People know what we're saying. You know, because the whole thing mix up. Mm. So yeah, our music started to broaden up from even when Bob let off the sound and got through and opened up the channels. Yeah. There was still music coming through certain channels, but he just, you know, Bob come along and just boom. Mm. We can go in the cop shops now. But then they started to they started to monitor how our music sound before it came on the pop charts so that started to dilute things. Because if you if you look at reggae's got so many different variations of sound. Of, of sound. Variations. You know, one of the variations, the mods like it. There's another variation where the skinhead them like it. Mm. You know, and they got another variation where the lovers rock people that want it. And it's variation. So our music our music influence a lot of people. You know, and the barrier is the the, the the struggle is that our music has not been able to just enter just like any other music. That's what I find. Because um if I remember as a youth when I used to listen to the radio Right, if the tune wasn't really up to speed, I would like to say something else, but choose camera thing. People use your imagination, right? <laughs> right, it's like so many music wasn't really to the taste, but you know what? After you hear the music two weeks every day. You can either turn off the radio every time you hear it, or one day you just end up you're bobbing your head to this tune. It, it grows on you. So, mm. if our music had the same opportunity to be able to have that space to grow, I think we would have taken over the world in the 60s, you know, from them time there. Yeah. Reggae would have just been not no struggle, it would have been there. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. it's always been there. It never it never went nowhere. Cause when I was coming up, let me say it was developing, but it was there when I was coming up. We yeah. did all this rock steady skia, mentor, merengue, calypso, everything. You know, 
even the R&B what they're talking about, yeah, that was there, but then it variated more. So the R&B that I remember was, you know, rhythm and blues. Mm. The big people them used to rock to that. Mm. That was like the second rock steady, but it was more swingy, you know, mm -hmm. swing beat. Well, the, all the big people know what we're talking about. <laughs> right? right, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If you could give advice to an aspiring artist, musician, producer, what would it be? Well, well, for me, as somebody who never had the opportunity to spend time in a music school and being trained to a certain level, on my side, is you have to love it, man. You have to want to do it. And you have to commit, you know, you have to kind of really look at your surroundings. When I say like, I'm not even just talking about the music, it's, like, it's your environment, you know, that's going to make you really, I think it's just determination within our mindset. You want to do music, there's certain things you have to do. One of them is listen, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You don't just get to just know music, so you have to listen. You know, and there's a lot of people probably coming out the same background as me that hasn't, didn't get the opportunity to share the thing, but they have the skill and they have the know how to teach. You know, it's like, just inspired to do good, do good with what you want. Because music is a thing that entertains people, it makes people, it soothes their problems, it solves their problems. It's, you know, music is a thing where it's part of life. If you're gonna choose it, yeah, just stay with it, man. I've stayed with it all my life. I've done painting and decorating, I've done all kind of stuff, plastering, you name it. Every time them, Leave me off my job. I've always had my music to fall back on. So, for me, once I saw how the, the world was running for me, I said to myself, well, you know what? Let me stay with the music and kind of get into the stage where it wasn't a stardom thing for me. It was a, it was a thing where to make a job of it. You know what I mean? My music is like a job. It's not about yeah, all them things about people. Oh, you must have had loads of girls and them things. Yeah? That's the early half of it because that's what happens. Yeah. But as you get older and you get more serious, you know, it's it's more about what you've got to show give to the people then because they're waiting to hear what you got. Mm -hmm. They're waiting to hear are you a real thing or was you a man that rare, rare, rare back in the day, rare. You know, as you know, as a little youth coming up myself, I mean, man, that I used to watch, they're still rocking. You know, that's what I said. They're still playing music, so they set the pace for me to show me that you know, once you do your music, you don't have to come out of it. You don't. You don't have to come out of it. There's loads of jobs you can do in the music business. People, youngsters, you know. You got video people, you know. You got people that write excellent lyrics. You got people with good ears. They maybe can't play nothing, but you put them in a room and they tell you how the thing sounds. Yeah. They tell the engineer, listen, man, set that up. Mm. You know, you know, you, you know. The youth them just need. They never get the exposure probably what I got. Mm. You know, because they got computers. Yeah. Still to this day, I still use analog equipment. I do use the. I use the digital, mm. but I work faster with analog. Okay. You know, so wherever I go, I always teach, always tell them something. Analog, I can't touch it to now. <laughs> the real thing. It is. What do you teach then? I teach anywhere the faci facilities are. Okay. That's all we do. I mean, I haven't done a. <clears throat> Facebook thing, I haven't had no chance to do that. But anywhere I go and the youths have something, you know, I always show them something. Because, you know, um, 
the sweetest thing is when you can see somebody do something mm -hmm. and you can hear the effect. When they see that, they kind of they pick up quicker mm -hmm. while you're reading it. And, yeah. I mean, I've done some of the reading. Like when I go a certain place, when the big man in my talk, we can't, we know where they must say, well, sure. yeah. Technical terms, then can blow your mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Yeah. But as long as it sounds good, you know? That's the main thing. Yeah. People don't care with how much things you use to make the music sound good, it just has to sound good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. I hear some man with some little things and when, when you hear the music what they're making, they say, yeah man, I want big studio like that. And the man's using a small thing. <laughs> but it's not the small thing, it's the man where I operate the thing. Mm -hmm. That's where it is, so. I always kind of, kind of teach the youth then that the sound is within you kind of thing. Yeah, the equipment is whatever it is. From you, I understand music frequencies, whether it's in a technical term. I, I mean, in a technical term, it just have to sound good. That's what I'm going to say. You know, when it gets to decibels and all that. I never studied that. I studied how to play the instrument mm -hmm. and put music together, mm -hmm. which was listening to records. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't describe to anybody what, it, what it, you know, six weeks or ten weeks or three months in a musical class learning classical. I have my dad's records to play. And when we do play them, I play a blue beat, then I play a scare, and when I told the pop tune. Mm -hmm. Like Rolling Stones and them, man. <laughs> yeah. Them, man. yeah, you like them better than the Beatles, you know, it was a bit more harder. Yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. What artists and genres do you listen to? I listen to absolutely anything that sounds unusual, not religiously, because mm. I'm a random listener. I'm not a listener that's going to listen to something and say, Whoa, turn off that! Don't want to hear that! I listen to it. The only music I'd probably do that to is slackness music, you know? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, um, no ideas. It's slacker than before, but then slack is slack, you know what I mean? So, I listen to anything with a heartbeat, with a pulse, you know? With, a, with, 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 with the breath. You know, fluid, you name it, everything. I can't pinpoint anything, you know, particularly apart from music that I play because I love dub music, I love reggae music, mm. you know. But before I was playing that, I was listening to every, absolutely everything okay. country and western, you name it. Really? Well, my parents used to listen to a lot of country and western, and even if me never like it. I still heard it, yeah. you know, so <laughs> I still did, I heard it, I heard it, I listened to it, yeah man, you know, I out Sundays, we used to live at Newcastle, at the big house, Sunday come, we're not going to church, we have washed down all of the windows, seen them and all the door panel them, and the old man washing country and western, you know, in the back of your head, you know, for about two hours straight, we're clean bunny stuff. <laughs> and until we're done the cleaning, that music is in your head back until, until Sunday dinner. Wow. Yeah. <coughs> so listen to loads of stuff, loads of stuff. Can you share with the Fire Red family what plans you have currently in the pipeline? The plans I have coming in the pipeline is to release more music. You know? Mm. Just to release more music because I, I work, like I said, I work with a lot of labels mm. that I've done music for, but not actually done it myself. So now it's all about what I can put out now. Okay. But you That's do, the plan. But you do produce with your with Lions Den though, don't you? Well, Lions Den, yeah. yeah. Lions Den is the company, yeah. 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 They might have started the thing. Yeah. Tribe 84 now was the company that I work with because they had a little more outlet. Okay. So we, we work together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. How can how can the Fire Red family keep in contact with you? 
Well, now that we've made contact, I don't think we're going to lose contact. Mm -hmm. There is no contact for lose right now. From the make contact, we contact. Yeah. So, you know, we'll keep in contact. I will update you with uh, everything that's going to be coming out in the next few months. Okay. Which, um, I have mixed some stuff that's been sent to the presser. Mm. Um, maybe I'll have a few weeks before they come. But before that, mm. I will send you some stuff. I will update you with what I've got coming out, no doubt. Thank you very much. Fire in. Fire in. Yeah, man. Please feel free to make a shout out to your well wishes. Well, I wish everybody that listen to Fire in and tune into Fire in a big up. I'd like to big up all uh, musicians, ones who I don't know and the ones who ever know. See, I don't want to bless up. The ones that are playing still. Bigger, you know, so I had a struggle and we are soldiers at this thing. Yeah. See? Bigger. Bigger, all of the sound man then. Every single one, I now call no name. Every single sound man in Britain and all of the ones in Europe that's playing Lions then, that's playing all of the production that's coming from I and I. All of the man them who's producing them is bigger. See? Big up the whole world. See? <laughs> bigger. Fire red, the hottest on the planet. Lava! <laughs>